right, so good to be back. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Setson. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to a new programming language called Alexa. This is a beginner's guide. You don't need any background in programming for you to take this course. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the course. Alexa is a functional programming language for building sellable and reliable systems. It runs on the Elon virtual machine called the Beam. It's designed to build scalable, maintainable, and fault-tolerant applications. So the key features of this language, functional programming, Alexa embraces a functional paradigm emphasizing immutability, pure functions, pattern matching, and this leads to more predictable and easier to test code. Then concurrency and distribution, leverage the beam Alexa provides built-in support for concurrency and distribution this makes it ideal for handling large-scale and real-time applications then the OTP open telecom platform don't be misled by the name there's nothing to do with telecommunications here the name came from I'm sure because it was developed by a telecoms company so Alexa comes bundled with OTP a framework that provides a set of proven components for building reliable and fault tolerant systems then meta programming Alexa smart macro systems allows you to extend the language itself enabling you to create domain specific languages and write more expressive code yeah so you can extend the language by using meta programming why choose alexa scalability alexa concurrency model and otp make it well suited for building highly scalable applications reliability otp supervision trees so it uses what we call supervision trees to make it fault tolerant and therefore it's going to be a reliable system productivity alexa's concise syntax and powerful features can boost your development productivity then community and ecosystem alexa has a growing and active community with a rich ecosystem of libraries and tools all right so in the following sections we're going to explore alexa's core concepts and then the syntax and then practical examples by the end you have a solid foundation for building robust and scalable alexa application of course we're going to build our applications using a web framework that uses alexa called phoenix so that's our end goal for for the installation it's quite straightforward go to your search engine search for alexa install follow this link right here the first link that shows click on that and then it take you to this web page right here so depending on your operating system follow the instructions there on mac os you can just use brew and so you can go brew install alexa for those on linux there are quite a number of flavors here for linux fedora debian ubuntu etc so you just choose your distribution here and then follow the instructions by the way you have to to run these instructions in the terminal for those on windows i'm on windows we have two steps the first one is to download the elang installer so click on this download and run the elang installer click on that to take you to this web page right here download windows installer you have 64 bit installer and 32 bit installer depending on the platform that you're on you can download one of these i'm on a 64 bit so i downloaded the 64 bit and you can just click and it will download and so once you download that you have to locate the installer mine is right here ot underscore win 64 double click that run the installation stick to the defaults quite easy and straightforward and then once you're done we go back again to this web page install page and what we want to do is step number two which is downloading Alexa so depending on the Elan that you downloaded here you download the Alexa version right here so mine was 27 so I'll download this first one at the time of this recording I'm sure this is the latest version so you can click on that and then you to download this installer right here it won't take long once you finish locate that installer mine is right here double click and run the installation is quite straightforward as well and once you're done we can test whether the installation was successful or not so you open the terminal so we can run Alexa dash dash version just like that and you see the version of Elang and the version of Alexa right here so you are good we've successfully installed Alexa once we're done with this now we need to go to the documentation because that's how we're going to learn this language it's still on the same page and then we go to the docs click on that docs and then our getting started guide right here so i'll click on this our getting started guide so here is the guide to learning alexa we're going to follow this guide which is our documentation by the way alexa is well documented so it's one of those languages that is well documented and so we're going to rely on the documentation when you install alexa you have three new command line executable that come along with alexa the first one is iex which is interactive alexa and then we have alexa and then alexa c in our command 
terminal we can run iex to run the interactive Alexa. if you are in partial you need to put a dot bat if i hit enter you see it takes me to the Alexa interactive if i hit enter you can see these numbers are increasing these are just line numbers we can write valid Alexa code 5 plus 5 and you can see it gives me 10. if i want to exit this i have to press ctrl c a couple of times and then i'm out of that iex dot bat because i'm using partial so i have to use bat i can say 5 over 6 that is a division 5 minus 6 minus 1 10 multiply by 5 by the way multiplication is the asterisk and you can see it gives me a 50 some data type which is a string and you can see it gives me that hello if i just say hello without quotation marks this is not a recognized data type so it's assuming it's a variable but i have not defined any variable here we can also exit this by writing system dot hold that will take me out as well of this iex of course the iex it's just a playground we cannot write our code right here we have to write our code in files because if you write your code in an interactive show like this then if you close this you lose your work i am sure we have everything set for our next tutorial if you have any questions leave them in the comment section you can also consider subscribing to the channel hit that like button hope to see you in my next tutorial for now i'm out cheers